This one's about planning landscapes. Chadwick with a plan? Surely not. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Marawewe. I'm Charlie. And in this video, we'll be developing this area here to put in a hillside as it breaks in and out of tunnels and comes into the TMD. So to that end, where do we start? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is this uh, vast area of cork going into the TMD really needs to be painted. And the reason for that is once all the track is laid and everything else, if I get any damage, you'll be able to see the cork. So if I paint it a dark grey to start with, then it will form a base colour for the TMD. Whilst that's drying then, we then develop the hillside in this area and I'll show you how I'm working out on the... working out? <laughs> bit old for working out, um, how I'm going to work out the tunnel portals, portals, <laughs> portals, the tunnel, I've been, I've been at sea too long, the, <laughs> the portals for the landscape area, this is far too much fun, I'll get some paint, right, so we've got these two paints here from Hobbycraft, these are an expensive commodity, they're a pound each, or they used to be when I bought them, pound a pop, so if I mix a bit of white with a bit of black, I should get with a, with a, a fair amount of grey, so I'll slap it on this first board and whilst that's drying I'll then crack on with working out the hillside. Now it is noteworthy that I have previously drawn the track plan on the cork, but the paint I'm putting on is thin enough that I can still actually see where I'm going to put the points, however there is a minor amendment on this place over here where I'm going to replace a, a point with a double slip to save a bit of room and I shall show you how that works out shortly. So we shall leave this to dry and as you can see the markings are still clearly visible. Okay so what's the current situation then? is we have a just a little placeholder, a girder bridge because there'll be a river of some description coming over here and the railway line that goes up and along here will lead to the freight liner depot over the far side. If I just, and th th that's why it's there, it's just there as a placeholder if I just take that out of the way and this you can see now that um, this if it's like is the up line coming from the helix and there's the line, there's a, so there's, there's this left hand point, there's a single slip here giving you access to and from the TMD and also feeding into the reverse loop and the reverse loop also joins up back over here with this line coming back up. Now clearly if I'm going to build a hillside here we need a tunnel portal. So what am I going to use? Well I've invested in the Hornby ones because um, I like to use stuff that's readily available. Now this is quite a reasonable tunnel portal for a double uh, for a double track but where would you put it well you wouldn't necessarily put it here because you wouldn't want these tracks to be inside a tunnel I mean that would be a ridiculous way of maintaining your railway so we need to put this tunnel portal downstream somewhat so kind of down here in this area but of course then if you if I'm going to build this hillside up here I will need another tunnel portal over this single track. So let's put those in place. So is the plan coming together? Well I put a second portal in here which obviously then leads into the TMD area with its sidewalls and again uh, in this area here there's the single with its sidewalls and viewing it from the other angle it actually looks reasonably interesting. But of course what we've got to do now is somehow figure out the construction of the hillside and the various heights, keeping in mind, of course, that I've still got to um, get the correct level for um, the freight liner depot to run right around the other side. Of course, never lose sight of your tolerances, and my longest piece of rolling stock is a Mark III coach, which will go through this tunnel portal. Uh, a little on the tight side, but at the end of the day it fits. Now I mentioned earlier about uh, some slight changes in the track plan. Now um, that great friend of mine, Lee Stoddart, who designed most of this track plan, um, we mentioned that if I take a loco from here and I want to put it in this shed, then it will have to go back into the tunnel to come around and because you need some kind of a head shunt. But there is no room for a head shunt unless we make some major changes. 
Well, if I flick to a later map uh, design, then what we've done is we've chopped these points and brought them all this way. And by doing so, we could do it by putting in this double slip. Therefore, now when a train comes from, let's say, the uh, the refueled area or the washing facility, it would come back up to about here and then go into its storage area. Of course, I have lost about a foot of storage on each track, but we're not in the embarrassing situation that we need to block this line here um, in, if we want to uh, swap a train around. Because if I bring a train up to here, really, it's going to disappear into the tunnel. This then track must get a red light um, and then become inoperable. Whereas on this plan, we can bring it back up. It will there be a red light here to stop it going into the tunnel area, um, and we'll be kind of good to go. Now further to that, if you can see these two little marks here and these three little marks here, this denotes where the tunnel mouths are. And if I switch this to a 3D view, now albeit rather primitive, here you can see the two tracks where we'll have our arched double portal there and there'll be the single one. And if I turn this around the other way, these are the two tracks coming from it and there'll be a double portal here. Running around the outside there, you can see the um, what will eventually be laid as the Freightliner depot. It gives you kind of a, a different view, but I just thought I'd show you this in any rail. It's a bit primitive um, and you need to really work on the, the heights of where the land's going to be. But at least then you can see how it kind of shapes up. Well, time has now gone on a little and as you can see, the grey paint is starting to dry and more importantly, I've now had my lunch. Now, zinging back over to these tunnel portals, I think it's worth pointing out that there's clearly a disparity in the tunnel portal height. Now, as you can see from this other camera angle, there is some space above these two Mark III coaches, which would allow me to chop a centimetre or two off the bottom of the double portal um, to bring it more to the same height as the single portal. So just because it is that height doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay that way. Please note health and safety gloves. This stuff can be an irritant. Right, so what is it? Well, I, I know it as Celotex. It's a uh, an insulation material used in the building trade for roofs and cavities and all this sort of blah. Um, and this one's made by Recycle. This is by X, Extra Therm, but I know it as Celotex, another trade name. And if I use, if I mean, if I say Celotex, it's just an encompassing term. Um, obviously, this country is now fully metric, so this is a, a two-inch piece, and this, sorry, that's a three-inch piece, and this is a two-inch piece. I think you want to get them. That's how they are. Where do you get it from? Well, before you prance along to the builder's merchant and say, could I have a couple of sheets of Celotex? If there's a development nearby, housing estate, factories or whatever going up, go along there, say to the foreman, excuse me, have you got any uh, Celotex, you know, scraps? And he might say, yeah, Billy, take this chap over to the um, skip and let him have some Celotex because they have to pay for landfill to get rid of their stuff that's left over. So you taking it on, doesn't necessarily stop the landfill because you might say it's a waste anyway, but it stops them making more Celotex because you don't have to go and buy any. So there we go, Celotex. Bit of an irritant, um, watch where you're going. Some people choose to remove the uh, the film. I do, um, but before I glue it down, I might glue this, the silver side to the baseboard, but Celotex, the Celotex, I tend to peel them off and then use a, a glue to glue them together. How do you cut them? Well, believe it or not, this is a saw that's used to cut uh, PVC and plastics. And because there is slightly different because a normal timber saw, the teeth are at an angle so that the cut is wider than the blade of the saw, whereas these teeth are in a line. So allegedly you get less mess. If you, if you believe that, you can believe anything. So what I'm going to do, I need to cut some of this up um, to fit these gaps. So I'll do a little bit of measuring and let you know how we're getting on. Does it make a mess? Yeah, nothing new there then. 
well, we're starting to make progress, not only by the state of me, but also with the blocks. Now, as I mentioned, the blocks um, in depth were two inches and three inches in depth, and two inches is 50 millimetres, three inches is roughly 76 millimetres, and I've cut them two and a half inches deep, which is 63 millimetres, and that's um, more than enough, really, to encompass the, um, what do you call it, the Woodland Scenics track bed, as you can see, which I will lay my track on as it comes around to the um, Branch Line Station. I've made a gap there for my bridge mouth, to, bridge mouth, my tunnel mouth, to fit into, so we're coming along. But before I make this hillside, I need to find where the other tunnel portal is going to go. I can't figure out the other tunnel portal until I've got the first two points on this board in place, and then I can lay the tracks back and then judge where the tunnel portal can be. Um, I want the tunnel portal to be as far east as it is on my layout, east as possible, so I shall just go and lay a left-hand curve point here and a left-hand point there and pop those into place sort of temporarily and then we can judge to see exactly where the tunnel mouth can go. Now bear with me while I go off topic for a few minutes. I'm getting quite a few comments with people asking me what I think of TT120 scale. Well, it's, some, it's the new kid on the block, I think we're all aware of that, and Hornby are ploughing in a substantial amount of money to it. So what, does we th what do we as a community think of that? I mean, we have N-Gage, we have 00, we have O, there's 009. Can the hobby, in your opinion, support another gauge? Is Hornby's business model right, that you can't go and buy this stuff or even see it at the average model railway shop? The jury is out in my opinion, but what I, would, what I am interested in as a community, what's your, what are your thoughts? So please leave me in the comments section down below. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that Hornby will re read the comments and may learn or we may learn something about their future concept and how much money they're going to be prepared to plough into this thing to make it work. TT120, please leave me with your thoughts. Now, on a more personal note, I'm a Digitrax user and I use the DS64s to change my points. I can't get it anywhere any in the world, anywhere. If you've got some stashed away that you're not using anymore, please drop me an email at chadwickmodelrailway at gmail.com um, and let me know if you've got a couple and how much you want for them. I'd gladly buy in sort of half a dozen of them. Um, but there we go. Finally, on this little section, a more of a serious one, and that is energy costs. <laughs> Today, I've got just the three, three layers on today in my railway room. Why? Because it's cold out there um, and I'm not going to turn the heating up full as I would in the past. Here is yesterday's smart meter reading. Now, as you can see, it's um, a reasonable amount of money. And if you were to times this by 30, it means my heating bill for December and January and these sort of months is going to be over £350 a month. Stoner crows, that is a lot of money. Um, and if you haven't got a smart meter, perhaps you want to get one because it does give you an insight into the, the bill that you're going to mount up. Now, I'm not suggesting you turn off your heating or whatever, or, or you're going to get a paraffin heater in your shed because the last thing you want to do is suffer from carbon monoxide poisoning. But it is worth keeping an eye on how much these energy bills are going to be because I was mortified really when it started to show we came out of a cold spell um, and the worst or the worst or the best, I think it was just over £17 we spent in energy in one day. Margaret and I were mortified. We have sort of turned down the timers, the temperatures and, and all this blah to try to reduce it. But as you can see, £12.50 or whatever seems to be coming the norm. Mm, beware. Right, enough of that miserable stuff, let's get back to modelling. Now, I clearly have a problem here because this doesn't look right. Because I've got these two tracks coming out of the tunnel mouth, but they converge, which clearly demonstrates that inside the tunnel mouth there must be a point. And looking at it from the TMD area, I mean, I think you can see what I mean. Now, I've done some extensive research and I cannot find an image anywhere that shows tracks converging into a tunnel mouth. So what am I going to do about this? Well, even though these two points are now in and fixed sort of thing and the holes are drilled through, um, 
we have to rethink the track plan. This just doesn't seem uh, a good idea to me. So what are we going to do? I think what I'll have to do is take out this point and move it over here. So if I gash a bit of track and move it kind of over here into this area. So therefore the tracks going into the tunnel appear to be parallel. I think there is far more acceptable. So we've what, I suppose we've moved it a couple of inches perhaps from, from this end. Right, let's give it a go. Well, I hope you agree that that is far more acceptable. And looking at it from the TMD, that's a much better result. And finally, from alongside the TMD, you can't even notice it. And here's the before and after. I mentioned earlier the possibility of reducing in height these tunnel portals. So what I shall do is take a little saw to this one and lob off a centimetre or two. So there we go, having taken off one and a half centimetres from the base of the portal. But please let me know if you think this bridge suddenly looks a bit squat. The twin portals, you can see the height difference is much more acceptable. Now you may have remembered in the past that this area here is going to come out and be boarded over. And the reason I haven't done that yet is to give me access into the TMD to do the building and the development and all that sort of blah. And then obviously we have the hillside coming up here, right up to here where the Freightliner depot goes. Now, using this cunningly placed piece of bullhead track, This is just about where the tracks will come out when it's finished. And you can see now that um, how the landscape will sort of shape up at this higher level. It'll obviously go across here and then down there into the TMD. So what about to cover all this? Well, unlike using the three inch, um, on order I have some large pieces of the two inch, hopefully from a friend of mine in the building trade. <laughs> anyway, so, um, the, the idea then is to cover the whole area with a two inch and then shape it to give it a bit more landscapey feel and also a rural development village, farms, farmhouses, that sort of stuff. And then coming up here, of course, into the more industrial side of the um, Freightliner Depot. This is known as Chadwick Parkway, the station over there. And I've always imagined Chadwick is... Um, is a small town over in this area that is off scene. So that's how my sort of mental process works. Right, so now you know what's sort of going on in this area. We do need a little bit, a little bit of carving now and some gluing down uh, in preparation for the major stuff which arrives uh, in a day or two. So what do we do next in this area? Well, the first thing we need to do, well, is start to gluing, but what I just thought I'd mention is I've cut out a section from this piece of 75 mil and that will go in there for the single portal that will glue down there They'll glue that slab there and they just form the lid really of the large sheet of two inch that will arrive now landscaping wise from the river here i need a roadway to rise up into this small conurbation that will be here so I need a roadway. Now, if I pop in that um, portal, then it will sort of give me the angle that I need to sort of think about for the rise. So I've drawn that on this piece of Celotex. Time to start gluing stuff down as well. So I'm going to remove the silver foil from this side and there and all the stuff along the back there and glue them together. So. Let's get gluing. Now I've had a change of plan. I've taken the silver paper or the silver foil off both sides. I'm thinking if I take it off one side, then it could sort of warp um, the foil, keeping it you know sort of straight in one dimension. Anyway, right. What am I going to glue? I'm going to glue it down with this product from Evo Stick. It used to have a much ruder name, and it's now called Sticks Like. I'm sure you've heard of it. Right. So I'm going to put some of this down here.
customer's piece. And then this piece. Oops, great big slab. I can feel it is quite grabby. It says on the uh, on the instructions, as it were, allow twenty four hours for it to dry. But it does seem to be quite a grabby product. What I haven't done is glued it to the back seam. Just in case I've made the mistake from hell, I can dig it out, uh, yeah, I can sort of prise it off and then scrape it out so it's not glued against the back seam. So there we are, really. That's quite nifty. Let's see if I can push that a bit closer. And of course I can always take a knife to this um, and, and cut it back. Right, I should get the rest of this down and get back to you. Now I've marked out some lines on this slab, as you can see. These are the areas I need to sort of cut away. And the weapon of choice is an old carving knife. Um, probably, probably not the most sensible thing to use when there's an ambulance strike on. Mm. Anyway, right. So I shall cut a load of this off and and then do a trial fit. Well, that's pretty much this area finished really as you can see the carnage is now complete and they're all sort of trimmed down with a carving knife with no major injuries my apologies i forgot to put on the old disposable gloves again so i'll have to be careful when i get washed up um, but these the slope is about right coming down to the river area um, but it just needs covering in plaster cloth and then sculpt mold to finish it trouble with sculpt mold it takes absolutely days to go off especially in this environment um, um, as I said, I'm expecting a big slab to go over the top and we'll see what turns up um, perhaps tomorrow. But you can see the way it sort of generally works. It's easy, really. Um, I'm not one for into cardboard strips and the interlacing and all that sort of stuff. I'd rather get these slabs in, them, in there, glue them down and all good to go. So I'll see you tomorrow morning. Well, fortunately, another couple of sheets of... Sellotex have arrived and my many thanks to Chris. What a star. So now I can get on with, you know, the, the understanding and building and planning of the little conurbation that will go up here. However, before we get into the intricacies of carving it all out and deciding where to put the roads and the barns and the streetlights and everything else, because I've now finally figured out where the tunnel mouth is going, I can now get on to laying track, which is far, far more important. And I've got three boards in the, uh, fiddle, in the TMD area to do. And as I'm sure you're aware, these boards will come out so I can wire them, pop them back in and do a board at a time. And then obviously the, the final pieces of track that go across the board joints. So that makes it reasonably straightforward. It's a, it's a funny old game really, isn't it, Model Railways, because you start off with great ambitions and you do everything and suddenly you hit a, hit a wall really and lose your mojo, which happens to me, happens to you, I mean, it, ha <laughs> it, happens, to, it happens to everybody. Sorry about the wall. Um, but what can we do to get around it? Well, what I've found is, especially producing these YouTube videos, I think this is the 27th video of the year, but because I can't keep doing track and track and laying and all this sort of blah, so I jump between things like um, a couple of weeks ago I did one on shunters. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks before that, there was some, some other strange subject. It wasn't to do with track laying, but was to do with model railways. 
I'm into now New Year's resolutions. So this year, sorry, next year, 2023, I will finish the track work, which might think a year, you've got a year to do all this. Yeah, I know I've got a year to do it, but to do these three boards and then build the um, branch line station over there, I think you've got to do it in bite-sized chunks. So I know that, let's say in the end of January, this board needs to be finished. The end of February, that board, the end of March, that board. And by doing it in sizable chunks, you can't just go into your railway room and turn around and say, what should I do today? And you go and procrastinate. You know, there's nothing wrong with running trains in the background, but you go out there to do something. And if you're anything like me, you'll do something on the computer or you'll do something, and then you start fitting couplings to wagons. These jobs are all important, of course, but sometimes they shouldn't necessarily take over. And I think that planning and giving yourselves goals to do within a certain time frame like okay in June in January I'm going to sort out that coal train I will put coal loads in all the wagons and sort the couplings out sort the guards van out and it'll be complete and if you do it in manageable chunks you don't kind of lose your mojo as it were uh, a friend of mine I was on an aircraft carrier at the time and my boss said to me about some about civil, about civil servants god the hate mail will come now that you can't necessarily beat these people at their own game what you need to do is like punching a giant marshmallow you can't do it you cannot make an effect but if we all take a little bite in the eventually you will consume it and it's the same with model railways you just need to take small selective bites and do it in sort of bite-sized chunks and then you will finish your railway hopefully i could be talking absolute twaddle but we'll see now, if you live in the southwest of England, please don't forget there's the West Camel uh, Model Railway Society Christmas Exhibition on the 30th of December in the Davis Hall down in West Camel. If you can make it, please, please come along. It's a great show, but don't come at 10 o'clock. Come at 12 o'clock because otherwise we're mobbed for the first couple of hours and it goes quiet in the afternoon. And there are some really, really cracking layouts this year. Well, that's about it really. So I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for supporting the channel through this year. And all I can hope is that we all have a safe and prosperous 2023. In the meantime, I'd like to thank the patrons. Don't forget to subscribe, a video here and here, and I'll see you in three weeks time. I'm gonna have an extra week off. Take care, thanks a lot, bye-bye.